All right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being back here. Uh, we are welcoming Peter Bogosian, a philosopher, creator of Spectrum Street Epistemology, which is what we are going to be doing today, a prolific speaker and author of How to Have Impossible Conversations, a very practical guide, and a manual for creating atheists. Um, before I turn it over to him, I'd like to say it was brought to my attention that our registration link was not working. So if you have not registered yet, please try to do that now. All right. Everyone got it? And with that, help me welcome Peter Bogosian. and I appreciate it, so let's expedite this and jump right into it. So, I solicited some topics. If we had a little more time, what I'd do is, I published a paper on how to do this, it's called the Delphi Technique, people use it for forecasting in the future. Basically what you do is, you go through multiple uh, iterative processes of voting. So for example, the first round, everyone will have, say, four votes, and you tick one of these and then you erase from the board the one that's the least popular. And you just do this each time giving people fewer votes. If you ever move in the public space, you have meetings, you want to build a consensus, it is a fabulous way to do it because everybody feels, and legitimately so, that they have a stake in, in the voting process. We don't have time to do that because we only have an hour. Is that correct? Is that right? So yep. we have an hour. So I'm just gonna I'm just going to throw out some, or if you have some, one of these you, you feel strongly about open borders, Muslim immigration, uh, transition for minors, a few people wanted that before we began. Is there a climate emergency? This seems to be a popular one in the election here. That's popular too, especially since the cast report with Hillary Cass. So here's the way we play the game. So this is designed for my first book and when I taught in the prisons. I designed these exercises to help, and Nadine said in the last talk about what would it take to change your mind? I've been pounding on that question for 20, 25 years. In fact, I've almost made a career of it, and now I've got to make a game out of it. Um, so one of the things that we'll do is, we'll here, here are the rules of the game. We'll start on the neutral line. I'll read the claim. These are claims and not questions. You then move to a line. Do we have enough? Neutral. Oh, we need one more type tape. We need one more line of tape. Uh, you then move to a line that aligns with your um, belief. So it's a, basically a Likert scale. The game only has one rule. It's a very simple rule. Yeah, right yeah, right there would be great. Thank you so much. The game only has one rule. It's a very simple rule. If we have a little time at the end, um, this is a great pedagogical model. You can learn, you can, if you're teaching, you can use this in your classes. Uh, if you're an educator, it's very useful. The game only has one rule. If somebody says something that persuades you, you can't do this. You have to commit at least one full movement. That's it. It's the only rule again. And you can't do weird stuff like you can't do this. Like You have to just go with the fidelity or the integrity of the game. One foot to the left line, one foot to the right line. And um, it has a few goals, and I will make those transparent right now. The first is to align the confidence in your belief with the reason and evidence you have for the belief. That's the first goal. The second goal is to enable people to speak cross divides. And I'll show you some very simple techniques that you can walk out of here and use. Okay, so let's let's just let's pick something uncontroversial for the first one, or not too controversial. Ah, transition for minors. <laughs> Good, that was a joke. Only one person laughed. Okay. Um, who has, oh, oh, and the other thing, you wouldn't mind. Thank you, thank you. And the other thing is, how's that, is that better? And the other thing is, you don't have to move. So if you, you don't know and you just want to stay there, that's fine too. Only move if you're genuinely persuaded to move. Okay. Uh, these are always better if we have disagreement. We, we can do these without disagreement. That's fine. It still works. I'll show you how. We have the boards over there. Oh, could you move that board over there? Thanks, thanks. Okay, so who thinks transition for minors is a good thing? Raise your hand. Okay, one, who thinks it's a bad thing? 
Wow, that really would have been different if I asked that question a few years ago. All right, can you, you want to play? Yeah. All right, cool. Come on down. Uh, and then who, who, who's, who thinks it's a bad thing? Okay, first hand I saw. And who is neutral? Could you come down? Okay, so everybody starts in the middle. Start in the middle, start in the neutral line. Uh, we usually go short, short front. Yep. Only, only just because of the visual, so people can see it's not. I have no, I'm harboring no animus against short people. Okay, so I'll say a claim, and then you move to where you, uh, what you feel. Strongly disagree is on this side, and strongly agree is on that side. Um, and I may change the claim over time, and then I may come back to the claim. But everybody get the one, you even know the one, one rule. If you're convinced, you need to move one line. At least. Okay, so I'm going to write the claim here in case we forget it. Um, minors, that is people 18 and under, uh, under 18, should be allowed to medically transition. Sorry, my penmanship is truly atrocious. Okay. So. I'm going to read the claim, step to the line, you agree with or disagree with. Minors should be allowed to transition, move, move to a line. Okay, this is, this is the ideal scenario. This is perfect, this very rarely happens. Okay, you see that board over there? See that board? Okay, grab that board, write down, face him so that nobody can see you, and keep it to your chest yeah, so that nobody can see. Write down your best reason for believing that. Why are you on the strongly disagree, and why are you on the strongly agree? Write down your best reason for that. So here's what we're going to do. Each of these people on the ends are going to write down the best reason for why they believe what they believe. And then we're going to have the person on the other line guess what their best reasons are. Now having done this all over the world repeatedly, I can tell you one thing consistently emerges. Uh, you, I'm not going to tell you what it is until after the first guess, but you can probably guess what it is. Okay. So, don't, don't even show me, please. W what do you think his reason is? What is the best reason he has for standing right there? Uh, the chance of detransition in adulthood. Did you write down on your board anything about detransition? No. Is the reason that he gave better than the reason you have on the board? No. Okay. Guess his reason. What is the reason he has on the board? Well, first I'd like to ask a clarification about the question. Sure, sure. So, what do you mean by allowed to? Do you mean like... Legally. Oh, legally? I shouldn't be here then. Oh, what, well, how did you take it? I meant by the parents. Okay, this is a great example of why you need to be precise in your language, right? I should have been much more precise in my language. Where, where, so don't show me. Where, where would you be if it were legally? Well, don't move, but just tell me. Over there. All the way. Really? Huh? Wow! <laughs> wow! It, do, how did, did you take the question legally or by their parents? I mean, I, I take it both ways, and I agree both ways. Okay, let's just do by their parents right now. Oh, okay. okay, we'll do by their parents. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, I don't want to just hoodwink you at the last moment. I want this to be... Okay, so by their parents. So, what's the best reason he has for writing that down? Respect their choices. Is that the reason you have? No, that is not. Guess, take another guess. You only got, you got two more. Ooh, okay. Um, kids aren't able to make irreversible medical decisions? Nope. Is the reason, is that reason better than the one you have on the board? Mm, no, but it's close. Good. Uh, take a guess. Ooh, ah, uh, this is really tough. Um, Maybe it's a way to love them. Is that what you have on the board? Nope. Okay. Can you sh 
share with him what you have on board, please? Uh, overwhelming evidence in favor of better outcomes. Overwhelming evidence in favor of what? Of better outcomes. Okay, not do you agree, but do you understand why that reason would put him on that line? Yes, but I have some clarification questions. Ask him. What do you mean by outcome? I mean, uh, in terms of mental health. How do you quantify that? Again, not to, not oh, to you agree. No, no, it's fine. Not, not that you agree, but understand. We're looking only for... Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. What am I... What am I How do you quantify that? Better health outcomes? Um, I mean, it's, it, it's a variety of studies that have been done, so they've, they've done it differently. But um, in terms of societality, um, in terms of symptoms of depression, um, in terms of reduction of gender dysphoria, obviously. Okay, not do you agree, but do you understand? I understand. <clears throat> okay, and what is the reason you're standing there? It hurts kids. Okay, not do you agree, but do you understand? I, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> you I, if, if, if I could ask some clarifying questions? Sure, of course. Uh, hurts how? Physically and relationally. Physically how? Mutilation. Okay, uh, could you give me an example of mutilation? Uh, okay, um, uh, how about amputation? Okay, by amputation, are you referring to something like a double mastectomy? It's one example. Would you refer to a double mastectomy as mutilation? Uh, depends on the context and the reasoning for why it's done. Okay, let's pause. You've been standing here and listening, yes? Yes. Okay. Do you understand his, not do you agree, but do you understand his position? I believe so. Do you understand his position? I believe so. Has anything he said persuaded you to move? And you're the, the neutral. <coughs> oh, wait a second, I think the neutral. Oh, you're on the Sunday. Okay. Okay. okay, so one foot on each side of the line. So put your other foot. Yeah, okay. So has any anything he said convinced you to move one line to be uh, agree? If uh, we have seen gener generally better outcomes, then we'll move me slightly uh, more towards a slightly agree, assuming that that is factually correct and there is no disagreement on the literature. Okay. Is there anything he said today that would cause you to move right now? Not yet. I haven't okay. seen. Uh, I'm going to be fully persuaded. Okay. Is there anything he said that would cause you to move one line to the left? Not yet. Okay. What would it take you... Ah, there's the question again. Most important question in your moral life. What would it take you to move one line to the left to neutral? What would you have to learn or hear? That generally we have seen that uh, most kids are worse off after transition. Continuing the question of parents should or shouldn't, not legal. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So if you were provided with that information, and what would worse off look, what would that look like? Um, we see high levels, uh, uh, kids uh, declaring that they regret, or they want detransition, or they in uh, interrupt treatment after a few years. Um, any kind of indication that uh, the treatment was not followed through or trying to be reversed, or that they, um, there's some measurable outcome that their health has declined, that physically the treatment. Okay, so may, may I ask you a question sure, sure. to clarify, please? What percentage of children would you need to either have regretted it or tr a transition to move one line to the left? Like, can, can you quantify that as a discrete number? Not sure I can, but I would say a significant amount. Um, o over 10%? I mean, I'm just tossing a number yeah, off. So from, from the point of view of the parents, I think I think that's uh, perhaps maybe slightly above 10 percent. Um, 15, 20, 20. That sounds reasonable for such a you know significant and um, irreversible choice. A 20 percent <coughs> regret rate is, uh, I think, significant. Okay. So, did you understand what she would need to move one line to the left? Yes. Do you think that's reasonable? Actually, no. 
Okay, what is unreasonable about it? Um, it doesn't, I don't think that we've defined uh, how to measure a quality of outcome in a way that is appealing to me, maybe to her, and I can see why it would be. Oh, I'm confused, what do you mean by quality? So, oh, the quality, not equality. Yes, equality, oh, yes, sorry, my bad. Okay. E explain what you mean by that. Well, uh, you know, there's a various perspectives on what makes life valuable and what people it's value. Or tell her. There's various perspectives on what people value, uh, what you value, uh, what makes life worth living, um, what determines your quality of life, how happy you are, etc. Or even whether or not happiness is something that is an accurate metric for that. Um, and Jack, let me, I, I just want to make sure I understand. So is the problem that you have with the criteria, is it that the, the it shouldn't be the criteria at all, or is it that her numbers are too high? Like their numbers should be like, you know, one percent or something. It's more the criteria at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you said you disagree because you say it hurts the child. Can you clarify what you mean by hurt? Sure. So first, I mean physical mutilation. But then I think it was brought up uh, like if you have breast cancer in both of your breasts and you have to get a double mastectomy, it doesn't count as mutilation. Uh, you know, you need it to happen. Um, and I think that calls into question the motives. Um, so for me, what would make a, uh, a procedure that physically alters your God-given body um, legitimate, it would have to not impede the orderedness of your biology. Is that reasonable what he said? Not to agree, but is that a reasonable criteria? criteria, criteria? Uh, considering that I think it was assumed that the desire to change gender is not a mental or physical thing that needs to be repaired, that makes sense, but I'm not sure I'm on the same side. And I, I, my follow-up question would be, what do you think the line should be then for medical intervention on a minor? What, what, what do you mean, like cosmetic? Because, yeah, do you think plastic surgery or circumcision is justified? No. Not at all. Okay. Paul, because that's a huge rabbit hole we could go down for 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> So, there's, there's no, there's nothing that could, you think would justify doing plastic surgery on a child. Okay, hold hold on to plastic surgery because that's a huge oh, rabbit. Well, because that's, that's why. Right. It, it is, but it's a twenty minute rabbit hole. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, so we we got that. Let's talk about moving one line to the right. What would you need to learn here, et cetera? I think empirical outcomes. Could you be more specific, please? Uh, what has happened to those kids that have transitioned, and what would not have happened to them? How, you know, the counterfactual. So you, you, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just want to make sure I understand. Of course. What would change your mind is data. I think so. And if you were given that data, you would change your mind. As a parent, yeah, I would like to know what happens to those people that do it. What if that data were not available? Um. Then um, just some kind of empirical, uh, you know, hear from the story of the people that did it and then regret it and what happened there. Some connection to what actually happened once you do it. Okay, and I don't necessarily mean to press you, but I need to press you a little bit. Of course, please. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, like, if it's just one person who had a horrific experience, that would not be sufficient to, to cause you to move. You, you would need, like, numbers, a certain number of people, like a certain percentage of people, yes? Um, I believe so, though I, I think, you know, every parent knows their kid best, so if there's a pattern of like certain kids that tend to be uh, socially anxious and might tend to falsely identify as, as transgender when they actually have other uh, mental disorders, I just, any kind of um, real life experience and any insights that we can have to better okay. know. So what question should I ask him? What should I ask him to see if he can provide to move you one? What should I ask him? Um, I would like to know the facts, the statistics. Uh, she would like to know facts and statistics in terms of transition and detransition. All right, let me just, uh, just pull them out of my database. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I cannot... Uh, exact numbers at you at like 11.30 on a Saturday morning. Um, 
I will say um, that obviously people on uh, both sides of the conversation uh, are throwing out uh, vastly different numbers. Um, I, um, I, I certainly, the, the numbers are pretty overwhelming um, in, for, on either side for whichever case you make. Um, and I will say that from my research into it, the, the ones that, you know, the, a really common number that gets cited is an 80% detransition rate. Uh, the study that that's based on um, actually, you know, counted kids not coming back to the clinic as detransitions. Um, counted kids, you know, they identify as non-binary rather than binary transgender, counted that as a detransition. Um, there's, there's various, um, you know, the rapid onset gender dysphoria study doesn't really, you know, that was a survey of parents who already had anti-trans views. Okay. Um, Does the data that she's looking for, if somebody was a sincere inquirer with no dog in the fight, they're totally neutral, they just want to figure out what's true, what the data is, does that data exist? Uh, yeah, and I think we're getting more all the time as well. And would that data be sufficient to warrant her moving one line to the right? Not, not all the way, just one line. Yeah, I absolutely think so, yeah. Okay, so did, did anything persuade you to move one line to, to your left? No. What would it take to change your mind for you to move one line to the left? Um, a persuasive argument for how gender transition surgery could, or procedures, including hormone treatment, etc., um, could increase the orderedness of one's biology. That's really interesting. So, you said a persuasive argument and not data. <clears throat> I don't care about the data. It's a, it's a philosophical argument to me. It's just... Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah, hold on, I have to process this. <laughs> so, so you mean to t I just want to make sure that I'm clear. So if an objective, independent, neutral person looked at the data and they said, wow, well, like there's li this is not true. I want you to know, them say it's false. Okay. And they said, wow, well, like literally there are no detransitioners. It was a right-wing conspiracy. It's a myth. Every 100% of the people who did this are happy. They, there's no suicidality. Forget comorbidities, it's, it's, that would not be sufficient for, for you to move one line to the right? No. Okay. Do you believe in gender dysphoria? Uh, presuming we have the same definition, yes. So you do believe that, um, just to clarify, because you said that you mentioned biological um, cohesiveness, so you do believe that there are children that have a desire to be of the opposite gender, and as adults still carry that desire to be of the opposite gender. You so mean the opposite you gender or the opposite people? sex? The opposite sex. Okay. Do you believe in trans people? Whether or not they exist. Or if they, yeah, that it is a valid desire and a, um, well, that's a different question. Yeah, we're coming up against, yes. we're coming up against a hard limit, but I just, that was so fascinating to me. Can you put the boards down to the side and then recenter on the neutral line, please? Do you want to erase it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, just put them on the other side just for time. Could you could you go to the everybody uh, neutral is one over. Go go to everybody stand on the okay. neutral line. Yeah. Um, whether or not minors should be allowed to transition is fundamentally a philosophical and not an empirical proposition. Move. Our parents, parents. Huh. Okay, so why are you on disagree? Tell him. Um, I'm not on strongly disagree because I think there's a philosophical element to anything, but um, I disagree because there, you know, if you can quantify, like, statistically, that something doing something increases positive outcomes for everybody. If you if you could do that, like in the hypothetical you posed, that there's literally no negatives and all positives. Uh, there's no amount of you know philosophical argument that's going to convince me that not doing that thing is a good idea. So correct me if I'm wrong. You're on this line, which means you 
you by definition of being on this line, you'd be willing to move all the way to the other side if the evidence were there. Uh, well, this is, no, this is about uh, philosophy, correct? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that empirical evidence is going to outweigh philosophy wow. in terms of me making my decision. I'm just not on strongly disagree, and I actually might move on to it now that I've said that because I, you know, if yeah, move anywhere. I'm going to move now because you know whether or not you can make philosophical arguments about literally anything, but that's not going to change my position if it conflicts with empirical outcomes. All right, I'm going to give you very, very quick last word, and then we're uh, on a hard, we're over a hard break. I only care about the data to the extent that it connects uh, the argument to reality. Um, you know, if I totally eschew and go to the extreme of data doesn't matter, then I just have you know cookie to ergo sum and nothing else, and only to the extent to which you know my senses can be relied upon, I'll trust that. But apart from that. Um, I have all I need. Cool. All right, give me a hand. Give everybody a hand. <laughs> okay. So everybody have an idea of how the... How, yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, guys. You, yeah, take your uh, lapel mics Oh, yeah, take your lapel mics off. Thanks. Oh, thanks for erasing that. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody have a good idea of how we play the epistemological game? Okay. If you're an educator, you can do this in your classes. It's an adjunct pedagogical modality. Okay. Now that we've started with the least controversial one, so I'm going to just throw these out, just real quick hands, if you want to do the next topic. Abortion. Okay, that looks like a no. Open borders. Three, four. Muslim immigration. One, two. Uh, drug legalization. One, two, three. Ukraine funding. We just did a trance once on the other one. Some speech should be regulated. Okay, let's do some speech should be regulated. Who has a, this might be difficult to see if we get, who, ha, who strongly agrees that some speech should be regulated? Oh, you do, oh, wonderful, come on down. Uh, who strongly disagrees? I saw your hand up there. Either one of you, you, yeah. Look, yeah, I'll do you first, and then I'll get you the next. I'll do the guy in front first. And then who is still trying to figure it out, or neutral? You still neutral? Okay, come on down. Okay, you get how the game is played? Yeah, I think so. Okay, come on down. Uh, you up front? Okay, so. Uh, remember, one line to the left, one line to the right, and I'm going to write this here so I don't forget it. And I'm going to change it a little bit. The government should regulate. Do you want me to say some or just speech? Oh, speech yeah. Just speech? Some speech, then it regulates speech. <coughs> well, hold on. I'm not interested in this question at all. Okay, well then <laughs> you don't have to, you want to Bow out? Yeah, I'll bow out. All right, bow out. Anybody <laughs> neutral Let's won't come? the government in it. The question's too easy. <laughs> oh, it's true. Why? What was your position when the government is in it? Well, so... Just bottom line. What bottom, line would you be line. on? What if line you would you be on? you want to have a speech... No, what line would you be on? In the government case? Yeah, if I say the government I'm should regulate speech. Disagree. And what line do you want? I would uh, agree. What line do you want? <laughs> you see the problem we need, it, it's always better if we have people who disagree. All right, so who's, so you, what line do you want again? What line are you going to go to? I strongly disagree. What line do you, agree. who's neutral? I, I can be neutral. No, who is neutral? <laughs> okay, we'll just do it with you guys. Okay, ready? The, okay, one foot to the right, one foot to the left. Okay, the government should regulate speech. Move. All right, let's do that again. Grab a... Grab a uh, grab a a board. Real quick, write down your best reason for believing that, and then we're going to do something else. Anybody have twenty five cents instead of a dime? Anybody have a quarter, an actual quarter? I never carry any change on me. 
Oh, you have a quarter. Oh, oh, thank you. Here, I'm going to give you a dime. That's the worst thing. That's the that made my trip worth it today. Thank you. I'll give it back to you. Yeah. You don't have to give me back my dime. You call it a finder's fee. Uh, it's up to the, it's up to you guys. So, um, what, one thing that I've seen, having done this all over the world, is it is astonishing to me. I've literally I don't even thousands of people these questions. How difficult it is, and you saw this in, in your round, you saw this in the last round, for people to guess the best reason for people who disagree with them. What is their best reason? And if you want to see truly something that's insane, like crazy level crazy, do this with the Israeli-Palestinian problem. Start throwing out like, oh, one state solution, two state solution. Nobody has any idea, literally no completely clueless why someone would think it's a good idea. I mean, the whole thing will devolve into a fiasco in like literally five minutes. Okay. Okay, put that down and turn it over. Take your time, take your time. You're neutral? All right, come on down. You're hired. Okay, so you stand in the middle. Uh, how are you doing? Are you a student? Yeah. Give yourself extra credit, son. Okay, put that over there and put it face down. Don't let anybody see. Okay, so your job is to stand there and listen. Now, you, the government should regulate speech. You agree, you strongly disagree. Okay, stand there, don't hold. Okay, you, you, you come to the far line. You come over here to this line. Uh huh. And yep, yep, yep. And you're looking like I'm insane. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. You walk over there to that line. Do you know what a you know? How to, have you heard the phrase steel man? Yeah. Steel man means provide the best argument you could for why someone would believe that. Your job is to adjudicate. Best argument for why I agree. Yeah. The the best argument for why somebody who actually strongly agrees. The, why would somebody stand on the strongly agree for the government should regulate free speech? Tell him. What is the best argument for someone who would believe that? I think because like some uh, expressions of uh, free speech can like can cause violence, violence or like yeah, like call people for violence, initiate violence. Like I think these are the main. Okay, so somebody would be on the strongly disagree, strongly agree line that the government should regulate speech because they feared that the speech would descend into violence. Yeah. And can, what examples do you think that they would or could give? Um, I mean, so hate speech, I think, like, falls, falls into this. Um, also, like, make even, like, specific calls, because, like, there's, like, some trolls on the internet who can, like, say that, like, oh, like, like, sending, like, other, posting, like, address of people and saying, like, oh, like, let's, like, beat him or something like this. Okay. Even though sometimes it's not, like, a, like, real thing that they are going to do, but they will still say this, like, on the internet. Okay. Not do you agree, but do you understand what he said? Yeah. Okay. What is the best argument that someone would make for a why they're on strongly disagree for the government should regulate speech? The government is an incompetent regulator, and speech is already socially regulated. The government is, in, in other words, they're incompetent, in other words, they wouldn't do a good job? They would do a bad job, they regulate it the wrong way. They would have negative outcomes, and speech is already like socially uh, regulated in so much as people don't want to say that. Okay, can you think of an example of that? Um, yeah, in like a social group, for example, on a college campus, um, people don't want to say things that would uh, make people dislike them, especially if they want to impress those people. So perhaps um, people don't take a controversial view of um, IQ and genetics, for example. Okay. Okay, not you agree, but did you understand? Yeah. Did either of those persuade you? No, I wouldn't say so. What would it take to persuade you? Okay, so everybody see how it's played? It's, it's just a template. It's the same questions 
in a strict format based upon what people say to see, to kind of put a little wedge in the cognitive architecture. Okay, what would you need? And again, they don't believe that, which make, but they're Dartmouth students, so they're smart. So we're up in the ante here. So what would, what would it take you, what would, what would you need to hear from one of them to persuade you? So I'd say to move to that side, yeah. I'd need to hear... Just one line, not all the way. Yeah, I need to hear a reason why like the carve-out exceptions to the First Amendment that we have aren't necessary. So, um, like incitement and libel slander. Do you think you can provide that for a position about which you do not agree? Uh, yes, if we legalized dueling, then um, we would uh, we would not need incitement and slander regulations. Does the argument to legalize dueling is that <laughs> is that sufficient to move to move you? No, I talk more about like public incitement or you don't know, you don't want to see open dueling in the streets of uh, New Hampshire. I might want to see it. <laughs> Okay, what, what would you have to hear from, from that side to move you one line to the side of the agree? Um, I, I guess it'd be, it'd be the opposite. It'd be an adequate defense of those exceptions. It'd be an adequate de uh, defense of like, the exceptions for incitement and libel and slander. Explain that a little more what you mean. Um, basically that speech which is direct incitement to violence that the government has an interest in regulating that. And again, I know you don't believe that, but do you think you can provide that against your own position? I can try. Um, it's like direct incitement. It's hard to, um, so why should, why should the regulate you? Or, Strongly agree. Go ahead. Maybe, maybe a better example would be like uh, speech that's provably false that like defames someone um, should that the government has an interest in. I think I can okay. answer this. Like I like in terms of false information, yeah, like because if you're telling false information about like some company or something, it like, can like actually bring like uh, physical harm of like in terms of salary and like the the money that like company gets. So like. And then you can kind of measure how, like the influence of this false information in the like physical sense. Okay. Did that persuade you? Um, it's okay if it did. Okay. Okay. So do me a favor. Swap back positions. Go back positions. And grab your boards again. So now you know what the other side thinks. Again, if you, and you're sitting in here and you're a Dartmouth professor or educator, you can use this. This is free. We put out videos on how to do this. Anybody can use this, and we're hoping that more people learn how to have robust epistemologies, calibrate their beliefs to the evidence, teach people to speak across sides. 100% free as part of the nonprofit that I do. Okay. You only have one guess now. Usually you get three, but you just. So what, 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 what do you think that he has on his board? Um. It will be used simply to oppress those who disagree with the current regime. Is that what you have on your board? No. Okay. Isn't that, wasn't that interesting? I find that fascinating. One guess. Um, I think like it's, again, something that to violence. Is, that, uh, is it to violence? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Oh, excellent. Read it to him. So I said, um, there's no clear boundary between speech and organizing violent political action. Expl explain that. So it's um, there's no clear line between simply pun like ideating in public and uh, actively organizing like a, a violent act towards some group or to, towards the government. Okay. Not do you agree, but do you understand both positions? What do we hear his position? Best reason. What is your best reason? That would interference with free thinking. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Say that again. Interference with free thinking. It interfere. What do you mean by that? Um, so like for people to function, like they need to use like their minds and like and think freely, and like when government starts to regulate these things, like it uh, like breaks down discussion. What if people are thinking about the wrong things? Yeah, and then it's better for them to express them, so like they can be persuaded like against it oh, instead okay. of fighting them from saying this. Okay. Not do you agree with either, but do you understand both? Yeah, absolutely. Did any anything that they say persuaded you? 
Um, no, because I think they're disagreeing. They're they're sort of arguing different issues because he's arguing about the regulation of general like general political speech, and he's arguing about um, I guess sort of inciting speech specifically. Okay, so if we were to reset the line right now to a, yeah, you can put those down. Thanks. If we were to reset the line to a new question to see if we could get them to agree on something, what would the, what would the claim be that we would ask? What, what, the, what claim could I say if everybody started on neutral that's within this arena? What, what could I ask them? What could I ask them to what? So like the government should regulate speech, and as you said, they're basically kind of two ships passing in the night talking about different issues. How could I frame a claim that if they started on neutral, they'd go to the same line about speech? But like, what claim? What would that claim look like? Uh, something like the government is an effective regulator of free speech. And ineffective, or effective, effective. Or, I guess either way. Okay, everybody, go to the neutral line, please. And yeah, you, you can play too. The government is an effective. Oh, yes. Which which government? U.S. government. Okay. Yeah. The U.S. government is, no, that's good. Those clarifications are excellent. The U.S. government is an effective regulator of free speech. Move. Okay. Okay, so that didn't work. <laughs> what, what was the intention? To the intention is to see if we can make everybody move to the same line. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah, help me out here. Help me out, anybody, if you, you want to claim, help me out. Within the domain of free speech, we're coming up on heartbreak, and I want to do one more. What, what could I ask them? All right, I know. Go, we're going to do we're gonna do lightning rounds. Okay, everybody go to the neutral. Without U.S., like, the board, because, like... Okay, hold on, everybody. I'm from Russia, so, like, comparing to Russia, it's much better here than... Okay, go to the neutral, go to the neutral. Should we redact that from the recording? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's your recording, it's up to you guys. Um, societies that limit speech are better off than societies that do not. I didn't say anything about the government. Societies that limit speech are better off than societies that do not move. Okay, go to the neutral again. There is more free speech in the United States than there is in Russia. Move. This is becoming more difficult. Okay, everybody go to the neutral again. Go to the new, neutral again. Ah, okay. My life, my life, not me, like you, as opposed to, you know, your, your, your life would be better if you had more free speech. Move. All right, good. Give them a round. Give them a round of applause. Good job. All right, all right. We're gonna do it. We have time. We have time for what time is eleven fifty? Does this end? Or one twelve fifty? So we have a little more time. Um, okay. Before we go, any questions about how how it's played? I didn't use the coin yet. I don't know if I still have a coin. Any questions about how it's played? Everybody, clear. If you work with kids, it's great with kids. You can do this. I do this with kids um, when I talk to them. I did a proto version of this when I taught in the prison with prison inmates. Okay, so uh, that. Uh, IQ and genetics. One, two, two and a half. Uh, prostitution. Oh well, that got a fair number of votes. fair number of votes, but it got um, yeah, gun control. One, two, three. There was a climate emergency. Wow, I'm really sorry. Oh, okay. All right. You want to? Okay. Who right. feels that there is a climate emergency and will define an emergency? Raise their hand. You feel that there is. Who feels that there is not? And who just is like completely clueless? Okay. Perfect. Okay, you feel that there's a climate emergency, sir? Okay, come on down. Who feels that there is not a climate emergency? 
all right, come on down. And who was like, I have no idea what anybody's talking about. Okay, why don't you come on down? Yeah. Okay, by now, everybody, okay, you're in the back. Remember the rule, you have to stick to the rule. One line, one foot to the right, one foot to the left, and you can't hedge, you have to go full on. Okay, before we start, how, how would you define emergency? Like the destruction of humanity. <laughs> uh, that there's no possible for future for the human humans to survive unless there's something dumb about the climate. Okay, so you mean like existential? Yes. Okay. How do you do? Do you, do you accept that definition of emergency? Yeah, I would also say it's existential. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, everybody's already agreeing. Do you do you agree? <laughs> now, uh, in my point of view, climate uh, emergency is when climate change dramatically, which corresponds with a decrease in population of animals and plants species. Oh, so for you, an emergency doesn't have to affect people whatsoever. Mm, the, in my point of view, the decrease of life, like plants and animals, will affect people eventually, sooner or later. Okay, is, is that your conception? That is not your conception of emergency, because your conception of emergency is clearly human species centric. There has to be like a direct causality between climate change. Uh, it, that impact on ecology and that impacting the future of the existence of humanity. Okay. So just as an, this is super interesting. So often when you have conversations with people across divides, part of the problem is you don't. It's like two ships sailing past each other. Night. The words that you use, like you, you're just trafficking in different meanings of the words. And so it would behoove us to spend a minute talking about what is an emergency. I mean, you really can't even have the conversation if we're talking about faith is that way too when you talk about faith or God in particular. Okay, so we're not agreeing on the definition of emergency. I would say that my definition of emergency is colored by the way this is covered in the press, which does feel very existential and I think sends a very kind of fatalistic, um, inaccurate message to people who are consuming the media. Okay, so. I don't think in the time we have, usually I'd spend like five minutes, we don't have that luxury. You know, it's what, just lunch after this, if you want to go five or ten minutes over, that's possible. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. What, what could we use, there is a climate blank, crisis, instead of emergency? So, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't mind using either terms. I think there are some problems with climate nowadays. But we can't use emergency because we mean different things by it. So emergency is off the table, unless we can agree upon what we mean by emergency. How about, I mean, I don't want to put words, I mean, I don't want to jerry-rig the claim. I'm just trying to figure out, like, what we could. I mean, don't a lot of activists say the climate crisis? Like, in that kind yeah, of, like, the climate crisis. I agree with the notion of climate crisis. Okay, so what do we mean? Okay, now now we define what we mean by crisis, right? <laughs> it's, it's, so this is, this is the important thing. So it's not pedantic to do this. It's how you figure out what people mean. This is not some obscure academic exercise. Okay, so what do you mean when, when you... How do you interpret when you hear the word crisis? Like, there are severe consequences of, like, about our surroundings as a result of the climate change, but, like, it has to have consequences okay. for us as living beings. Like, why would I care about the world getting hotter if there are no consequences of it that will damage humanity? Like, why would you care if uh, Pluto were getting hotter? Exactly, like you have to prove that Pluto getting hotter has a consequence, an impact in my life, then why would I care? Like why would human care, would humans care then? Okay, so then crisis means what? Something that creates an externality to humanity. Even with animals. That should be addressed implicitly. Yes, exactly. Are you agreeing with that? I'm on the same page as Eric. Okay, you? To some extent, I think that the consequences of climate change are building up slowly. For example, if there would be like... Is it, is it, is it, do, do you agree on the, the use of the word crisis? Yes, I agree. Okay. Okay. Imagine having a conversation and not doing that, right? Imagine like legacy media where it's like you throw people in a room and they're this. Okay. I'm going to come over here. You claim in case we forget it. There is, sorry about my pen chip, a climate crisis. And we all know what climate is, I think. I think we've agreed on crisis. Okay. This is strongly agree, that strongly disagree. There is a climate crisis move. Oh, 
interesting. That's super interesting. I guess it isn't interesting because I solicited the study <laughs> beforehand, so I guess I take that back. Okay. What is the best reason you have for strongly disagreeing? Tell him that there's a cr climate crisis. Tell him. For why I disagree? Yeah. Tell so him. when you look at the data, um, climate-related deaths from just 100 years ago, they are massively lower than they used to be because we are much better at dealing with things like natural disasters and human innovation is constantly finding new ways to do that. So if you look at life expectancy, um, it is significantly higher and in part that is because of the way we have been able to address um, disasters that are caused by climate change. Okay, you have five sentences. Explain to him why you strongly agree there was a climate crisis. The population of coral reefs, coral reefs is uh, says it's decreasing. There are less trees. Uh, there are substantially a lot of animal species that are dying right now, which will inadvertently uh, sooner or later later affect human life expectancy. Did you understand both of those positions? Yeah. Anything persuade you one way or the other? Um, like no, because do I say why? Yeah, sure, if you want. Um, they both require like clarifications. For example, he just made a claim, but we need to learn more about the data. How does he know, for an example, if we have less certain tree species? Is there any causality analysis that is done about this? A predictive analysis. This happens, therefore, this will cause this, and this will significantly impact the lives of human beings. I've never seen that kind of data. And even when he provides that data, it's not something that can change my mind here. I have to check the methodology, I have to check their sampling, I have to check how they did, which kind of analysis that they picked to doing it. Um, What's your major? I'm like, uh, I'm right now doing a master's in business management. And I have to check whether the statistic was like significant. Like there's so many things about it. It's not something I can just be like, there are a lot of, you know, quantitative stated studies and a lot of things, but the methodology can be wrong. Okay, so I, I don't usually ask this question, but I'm going to ask this question now. What would a reasonable person, someone who's like intelligent, thoughtful, educated, fairly well informed, what should, what should a reasonable person know who's on the neutral line to nudge them one line toward you? What, is it an argument? Is it a piece of data? Is it evidence? Is it a domain of literature? Sure, so I think something that really resonates with me, um, I don't have the exact number, but for instance, a study came out that was published in the Human Progress Journal a few months ago, um, and it was co-authored by my colleague, so I have to, I'll put that out there. But, um, Essentially, when you look, I go back to the first thing I said. When you look at the how uh, human beings are able to address climate disasters today, like tsunamis, natural disasters that we all think of weather-related events, we are so much better at countering those, and ma there are massive, massively fewer fatalities than there used to be. So, although I can concede that the world is probably warming at a slight pace, I think that we as the human race have been really inspiring in being able to counter that with innovation and ingenuity. Okay. Is that a reasonable thing that someone in the neutral line should know to nudge them one line to the left? Like, I have to clarify to see if I understand well. So what you mean here is that Tell we Tell him. as humans are part of this change and um, That it's anthropogenic. Yeah, so even though the climate is warming up, this won't have significant consequences for humanity. Like, is that the claim? Is that the claim? That it won't have significant consequences for humanity? I think it will have consequences, but I think that as humans, we always were finding ways to address them. And that's why, th that's why you're there, because you don't think it's a crisis. Correct. Okay. Is that a reasonable thing? Is the, is the is what he said reasonable that a neutral person such as yourself would move one line to the left? I mean, yeah, I do think that humans are capable of finding solutions to a certain crises, and you know they are innovative, they produce things, and they should be able to find something to 
confidence, so that's reasonable. Is it sufficient to move you right now? I guess a little bit. Okay, so go ahead if you want. Okay. What is a reasonable, what would a reasonable person need to know to nudge her back to the neutral or to the side they agree? I think it's 36, uh, we show that uh, populations of certain endangered species are stopped declining. Uh, basically the world is a giant ecosystem and assuming that changes in population of one species will not affect the human is a myth. Uh, uh, okay, so did you understand what he said? Ecology is changing and therefore it will have consequences. And is that a reasonable thing that he said that you would need to know about to move you back to the neutral or even one, one line more to the right? No, because for an example, when Europeans colonized Australia, they brought a lot of foreign species. This didn't imp severely impact human species who settled their different con condition and Australia is a pretty nice little country right now. I'm going to give you one more chance. Well, uh, there's been like a rising sea levels, which uh, threatening uh, most of the northern hemisphere, and there might be a chance that most of the popular cities, such as New York, will be sunken under water. And if the data will suggest that, yeah, I think there is a climate crisis. Okay, so just so that I'm clear, so. The Earth is warming. We have not talked about whether that's anthropogenic or not. We're going to bracket that. The Earth is warming. I'm trying to repeat back to what to make sure that I got it right. So the Earth is warming. One of the consequences of the warming is that there are rising sea levels. One of the consequences of rising sea levels are the coastal towns, maybe even the coastal cities, yes. would be adversely affected. And because they're adversely affected, that constitutes a crisis. Did I yes. say that correctly? Yes. Okay. Is that sufficient to move you? To the neutral or one line over? Uh, because you gave a good argument, like why would humans not be able to deal with that? For an example, this made me think Dubai and Israel, like they're um, turning salt water into drinkable water. That such technology exists right now in 2024, well, they've been doing it for years. Right now, silver is expensive. What, what makes us say that within 20 years, that's not going to be something more cheap and affordable and might help with the rising sea problem? This is just me not knowing the science of it. So this is just the surface. There might be even way better solutions to rising sea levels. So okay, is the idea that there could be some technological breakthrough? And I have no idea if AGI is coming. You're asking I'm the wrong guy to ask, but maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But some technological breakthrough, something that we don't currently have, is that possibility enough? to diminish the definition of crisis for you to make to convince you to move to the agree yes or not uh, absolutely not because may I give you know, this example sure. nowadays in my country of Kazakhstan there has been floods which are mostly caused by the corrupt government in Kazakhstan and if there would be some sort of technological breakthrough how much time will it take in order to implement it in the most vulnerable areas because the most vulnerable areas to climate crisis are the rural ones uh, within the corrupt government uh, with like certain economic and geopolitical problems. Uh, I think that solving climate crisis problem will help us to take some time so that countries could implement those technological advances. Okay, go back to the neutral, please. Everybody go back to the neutral. And switch, switch. Um, in the next 50 years, if all, accept the question by fiat, please. If only a hundred people are affected by climate change, it is a crisis. Move. Yeah, but you have to clarify. Huh? You have to clarify. Die. If only a hundred people die, it is a crisis. Yeah, I don't know. Is it always a great answer? Okay, move to the neutral line. In the next hundred years, if 1,000 people die due to global warming, it is a crisis. <coughs> Move. Okay. I don't know what we've okay. Okay, so just real quick for everybody. So belief is almost never binary. Occasionally it is, you know, this is a hand, the earth existed before I was born, stuff like that. But most things, belief is not binary. So the, tr the trick then is to use a scale to tease that out. 
Okay, so everybody go back. So we all know where this is going, right? 10,000, 100,000, a million, 100 million. All, you, all I'm trying to do with these questions is to push people to see if I can get them on one line. Then when I can get them on one line, then I know the, the, the linkage to, for them. Yeah? How would that change if instead you said 0.000001% of the population? Well, we could find out right now. Isn't that great? Okay. But let, let, me, let me run the experiment first. And I can run over a couple minutes, yeah? Is that cool? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if 100,000 people died in the next 100 years as a direct result of a climate as a, of the climate, it would be a crisis move. I, I need to ask a clarification. Yeah, clarify. So, um, is it because there might have been a solution to it, but human inadequacy or something like, you know, the state involved and humans were not able to... Nope, nope, it was like, there was no it warmed and there's some crazy, creepy wave somewhere, tsunami, that's it, ciao. Yeah, that's the Okay, somebody do the math. Uh, what, what? So 100,000 is point, what do we, yeah, what is 100,000? I'm going to do the point zero zero thing, and then I'm going to ask the question that way. My math is, to say the least, quite limited. Oh, wow, that caused you guys to move to strongly. So why are you on the strongly disagree at 100,000? Over 100 years, with yeah. the, the amount of people in the world. I mean, it's just negligible. <laughs> and not, I'm, I'm not feeling to me like I was a moron. <laughs> No, sorry. Um, I'm also not saying, I think that in these debates, I mean, I'm not trying to be callous. I think, I mean, of course, anyone dying is tragic, but, I mean, the amount of people that will die from cancer over the next 100, I mean, like, how do we define a crisis? I think that, especially working in the press, I'm really leery of that word because I feel like it is often used to, like, stoke panics that don't really exist or that there's not much that we can do about it. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Okay, cool. Go back to the neutral, please. What is Okay, well, everybody go back. Okay, so it's a little unfair because they now know the translation, but that's okay. So if 0.001% of the population died in the next 100 years from, from the climate, that would be a crisis. Move. Plus the population of the climate. Uh, whatever, if we can e extrapolate outward from whatever it is. All right, cool. All right, give them a round of applause. Good job, good job. Okay, did anybody have any questions at all about how we did that, what we did, how that epistemological calibration works? Yeah, hi. Hi. So, um, what is the end goal? What are we trying to achieve? That's a great question. Multiple, it has multiple, question? yeah, what is the end goal? It has multiple end goals. One end goal is to help people calibrate the confidence in their belief to the reason and evidence they have for their beliefs. That's one goal. The other goal is, so this is, in philosophy, this is almost a heresy. Um, but I've been publishing about this, reading and writing about this for most of my life, and I'm convinced that what I'm about to tell you is true. I place myself, I strongly agree to this. When you ask somebody what they believe, Almost everybody will tell you, especially if it's a moral thing, they'll tell you. If you live in an open society, whether you can, you can speak freely. What do you believe? Or among friends. The, the more emotional valence it has, the, the more of an identity concern it has, like the more identity level salience it has, it becomes tricky. But as a general rule, when I say, well, what do you think about something? We're hanging out. She'll tell me. The consequence of doing that is that she calibrates her confidence upwards by listening to her own reasoning. It's a great, there's nothing wrong with that. That's Socrates' question. It's a great question. I use it all the time. I would say, as I get older now, I'm 57, the more bang for the buck is not why do you believe it, it's what would it take to change your mind? What would it take to make you less confident? What would it take, what would it take to make you more confident? So often when we have conversations with people, we're throwing out conclusions for them and we're engaging the conclusions, like in my book, I write, we're delivering messages to them. And so instead of delivering messages to somebody, think about epistemology, how they know what they know, and see if, if their reasoning is justified in, if the process they use to come to the conclusion is justifies their confidence, then you should calibrate your confidence appropriately to whatever it is. The other thing is, when we speak across divides with people, 
did you notice in some of those, like the first question we had to talk about government, you notice how we had to change the words? Does it take time? Yeah, like for sure, it takes time. Is it worth it? A hundred percent. Like if you actually want to figure something out and you live in a democracy and you want to get along instead of everybody picking up an ax, then you have to take the, literally the two minutes that it takes to do that. So it's a free, easy way to help people make their ideas clear and speak across divides and calibrate their beliefs to the evidence. Because remember, that's the question that almost nobody is asked, what would it take to change your mind? But that's the question around in science, like falsifiability, that's Popper's 1953 piece. Like That's the thing that we have to keep returning to as a mantra. Oh, what would it take to change your mind? Why do you believe that? What's your evidence for that? What evidence could I prevent, present you with? The other thing that's really interesting about that process, so infrequently do people guess the best reasons individuals have who stand on opposite ends of the spectrum. It's so infrequent. And if you have a conversation, I published a few pieces on this, I one in a video piece in the New York Times a while ago, but it's so, it's so effective to do this. It's astonishingly effective, it's free, it costs you literally nothing. When you're in a conversation with somebody, don't assume that, they're, that what they say is that they're all in on it. Ask them to put the belief on a scale. That's what this is. This is a Likert scale. So all I'm asking is, oh, you believe in uh, prostitution should be legal. Yeah, I do. Oh, well, how confident are you in that belief on a scale from 1 to 10? With 10 being I'm absolutely positive, 5 being maybe, 1 being no. When you do that, it's, it's a way to figure out the next questions to have to have a more productive conversation. But the best way to do that is, I'm telling you, it's so simple. And almost once in the bluest of moons will someone say to me, I'm not going to put it on a scale. Okay, don't put it on a scale. Makes it more difficult. Once you start doing this, you realize every conversation you had with someone across a, a gulf, a political gulf, in which you did not put the conversation on the scale, you'd think, wow, those conversations were in hard mode. This puts the con this puts the conversation in easy mode. All right, we're over. Thanks for letting me go over. I appreciate it. I hope that you en enjoyed that and took something from that.